What's well, good, Commanders fans? Camp Day 13 or 14. They did release the uh, unofficial depth chart. Uh, I just want to go over that real quick. Not many surprises. Um, basically, you got your starters. Terry McLaurin is your first wide receiver. De'Ami Brown's right behind him. Then Mark Michelle is the third. And Kyrie McGowan is your fourth. Starters are Terry, Curtis, and Jahan. Of, cor of course, um, Cam Sims is right behind Jahan Dodson. Uh, Dax Mills right behind Curtis Samuel and Alex Erickson's behind him and then Matt Cole is the fourth slot wide receiver so that's big time because it basically it puts Dax Mills ahead of Alex Erickson and other guys Kelvin Harmon is right behind Cam Sims too you, I keep forgetting about Kelvin Harmon but he, he looked really good on the open practice that I went to he had a really nice catch down the field it was probably like 20-25 yards he still has really good hands he's not going to make the roster but Though, though, that's one of the few things that really sticks out to me is just Dax Mill, where he's put at the offensive line is, is what we all thought it was going to be. Trey Turner starting at right guard, Sam Cosme at right tackle, Chase Rudy at center, Andrew Norwell at left guard, and then Charles Leno at left tackle. Right behind him is Cornelius Lucas, Rashad Hill, third string, Aaron Montiero, fourth string. Chris Paul is the backup left guard. He's not playing tackle. They don't have to list him as a tackle, but he can play both positions. Tyler Larson right behind Chase Rudy with Schweitzer behind Trey Turner at right guard and Keith Ishmael is still on the roster too is the backup the third string center John Toth as the fourth uh, string center so those are the notable offensive linemen and then tight end is something to look at you know in this preseason game on Saturday like who's going to play John Bates uh, I think they pra I think he did practice today but JP Finley said that he walked off the field um, and of course Logan Thomas we know he's not playing we don't we don't exactly know when he's going to come back but you know Logan Thomas is your starter John Bates is second string or your tight end number two, and then Cole Turner is your tight end number three. Sammy's Reyes is tight end number four, and then Curtis Hodges is fifth on the depth chart. And then you got a Marnie Rogers, Eli Wolfen, and then Alex Arma is listed as a tight end as well. So Sammy's Reyes being the fourth guy ahead of Curtis Hodges, we'll see how that plays out um, in front of a Marnie Rogers as well. So we'll, see, we'll just see how that plays out. But Cole Turner, of course, he's, he's tight end number three right now. Maybe he might jump to tight end number one before the year is over. We'll see. Or I'm not, not tight end number one, but maybe tight end number two before the year is over. Um, so just seeing where Sammy's Reyes is listed at, we'll see on, I wanna see him in preseason too. It's, it's, a, it's a battle between him and Curtis Hodges and also Armani Rogers there. So um, quarterback, of course, Taylor Heineke's second string behind, behind Carson, Sam Howells, the, your third string quarterback. I can't wait to see him in preseason too. I can't wait to see him play. Him versus Matt Corral, that's somewhat of an intriguing matchup there. Uh, um, first round quarterbacks. And then running back, the only surprise to me is kind of Jonathan Williams above Jared Patterson. You got Gibson's your number one, McKissick's your number two, Brian Roberts is the third string guy on the depth chart. John Williams is fourth, Jared Patterson is the fifth uh, guy on the uh, running back chart. So, and like I said, don't, don't, take, don't take too much stock in the depth chart. It's unofficial. You still got a long way to go. You still got three preseason games. Just, you know, see some of the guys like Dax Mill, Alex Erickson, Brian Robin, I mean, um, Patterson and, and, um, John Williams, guys like that. We'll see where they end up. That's the only thing. Everything else was just your normal. Like the defense, Montez Sweat obviously is your starter. The whole defense line is your normal starter. Chase Young's first on the depth chart, but Jane Smith Williams right behind him. Then it's Shaka Tony. Then it's Boomy Rotimi. So just seeing who's rotating behind Chase Young while Chase Young's going to be out. Like who's rotating? David Bada's right behind John Allen. F.A. Obata is listed as third string, though. That's the only thing where I see, you know, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of surprise there. Um, Fidarian Math is right behind Deron Payne. Daniel Wise right behind um, Deron Payne as well. Casey Two Hills right behind Montez Sweat. William Bradley King is third string. Your third string defensive end. Jacob Panuski. Sorry, I'm butcher, butchering his name, but they said he's impressed in camp so far. I think he went to Michigan State. He's your fourth string defensive end, so he probably will be making the uh, practice squad. Justin Hamilton, who they brought over from the Cowboys, is your fourth string uh, defensive tackle. Nate Jerry's on the. He's the. He's your fourth string linebacker, outside linebacker. So they just brought him in. He's not above Deshaun Harris or Khalid Hudson. Jamin Davis is your starting offensive linebacker. We know David Mayo has gotten some first string reps, a good amount of first string reps, uh, first starter starter snaps, you know, and then Cole Holcomb's your starting middle linebacker. David Mayo is your backup middle linebacker. Milo Eifler is third string. Trey Walker, who they just signed as well, who retired and came back. He's your fourth string middle linebacker. Kendall Fuller, of course, is starting. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight defensive backs on the roster right now. Kendall Fuller starting William Jackson, CB number one or two, you interchange either one. Corn Elders right behind Kendall Fuller. Christian Holmes, the rookie, is behind William Jackson, the third. Channing Stribling is your third string. Troy Ackie is your third string corner. He's going to make the roster. He's going to make the 53-man roster. He always does. He is Mr. Untouchable Trapke. 
He's gonna make it for special teams. Dewan Neal, who got an interception on Sam Howell in the open practice that I saw on Saturday night. He's your fourth string corner, Devontae Ballsby, who they just brought in as your fourth string outside corner, and Ben St. Juice is your starting slot. Danny Johnson is your backup slot, and then Josh Drayden is your third string slot corner. And then of course, safety camera curl starting at strong, and then Bobby McCain starting at free. Percy Butler is right behind Bobby McCain. Derek Forrest is right behind uh, Cameron Carl is their strong safety. And then Jeremy Reese is your third string free safety. We'll see if he makes the roster of the practice squad. Farad Gardner and Stephen Parker are your third and fourth string strong safety. So that's basically it. And then Tressway, of course, Joey Sly, Tressway, Cam Cheeseman. Kick returner starter is Alex Erickson. So that's how Alex Erickson can make this roster. Dax Millen is your backup punt returner. And then um, backup, your backup kick returner is Kyrick McGowan, who I I, I want to see him. I can't wait to see him on Saturday, too. Jared Patterson is your third-string kick returner. And then uh, Kyrick McGowan is your third-string punt returner. Jared Patterson did a really good job punt returning in preseason, so I'm intrigued to see him on Saturday as well. So, But all right, we'll just get – that's basically the only thing that was, you know, there really were no surprises for the most part, to be honest. But Dax Milne is up there on the depth chart. So it looks like he's, he's the guy out of the wide receivers that will be making the roster. So let's get to the uh, news and notes here. Um, and then one last night about Sam Mills, one last note, I think, you know, they, they saw how practice went without him there and they probably liked how it went and that's probably what happened. You know, it's, it's a tough, tough thing to hear when somebody loses their job, but I think changes needed to be made. I don't want him to be, you know, a scapegoat or anything like that, but changes definitely need to be made. And if they don't show up in those first two games, I think other heads were, will roll, maybe Jack Del Rio other guys will definitely be held accountable there. So, but I think they liked the way practice went while Sam Mills was gone. And they were like, hey, you know, they brought in Warren Sapp and other guys were in Kerrigan. And they're like, hey, yeah, we're just gonna make a change. So um, first, let's start off here with Zach Selby. Uh, ben Sanders says, Sidefield crew includes a returning John Bates and a first time visit from Ben St. Juice, Cole Turner and Tro Troy Ackie as well. No JD McKissick at practice today. Uh, Trey Turner has been out since July 28th. Ron Rivera said Trey Turner is progressing with his quad injury. His hope is Turner will be back in 10 days or say that say and they'd like to get him at least one series in the preseason. But it will obviously depend on his health. So we'll see if he plays on Saturday or any preseason games at all. Uh, Matt Paris is William Jackson the third is participating in individuals, but Ben St. Juice is on the side field. Washington, Justin Shells today, no pads. So um, somewhat of a not, not a relaxed practice, but they just were in pads today. So. Uh, Matt Paris says the commanders generally go first team versus first team, but they're switching it up today. Sam Howell running the third team just had a real nice ball against the first team. Kyrick McGowan with the catch. So I'm intrigued to see Kyrick McGowan. I'm intrigued to see Sam Howell, man. Kyrick McGowan, he has some burners, man. I'm telling you. Um, Zach Selby says Dax Mill opens up on 11 on 11s with a grab from Taylor Honey. Already off to a good start. So Taylor Honey, he making plays. Dax Mill making plays uh, again. He's had a really, really good camp. He's really impressed. Uh, Zach Selby says, Carson Wentz just finished up 7-on-7, seven seven, went 3-for-6 on his passes. Two were on the numbers, but were dropped by Curtis Samuel and Antonio Gibson. One was a really nice pass breakup by Danny Johnson. So, Curtis Samuel, got to bring that in. And uh, Antonio Gibson, got to bring that in, man. Antonio Gibson, I heard, he, you know, he was practicing with for a long time with um, Jennifer King on basically ball handling, holding the football and not fumbling. Catches, catching is included, too. He, 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 he usually he's a good catcher. He usually doesn't drop passes. The fumbles is the problem with Antonio Gibson. But it's good to hear that Curtis Samuels is actually practicing. We'll see if he plays on Saturday. I highly doubt he plays on Saturday if I had to take a guess or a bet. Um, Zach Selby says Carson went to the lows for a 35-yard throw to Terry McMahon, who brings it in with Bobby McCain covering. So the hoopla and the reporting is that Carson Wentz has been very inaccurate. Um, to the point that ESPN like put us number 20 in the power rankings because they base it off what beat reporters are saying about how inaccurate Carson Wentz has been and the terrible chemistry that he's had with, with Terry McMahon so far. So I'm intrigued to hear that they're starting to gain some chemistry. It takes time. You don't want to base everything off of a couple of practices. You want to see preseason, how the things play out in these practices. So I'm not going to overreact to what beat reporters have said about Carson Wentz's inaccuracy. Now, Carson Wentz, has had, he's, had, he's put together some really good practices ever since they put the pads on. And he really hasn't thrown any interceptions that I've heard either. Um, Ethan Cadu says, Carson Wentz has had a deep connection with Terry McLaurin during the 11th. Chemistry is getting better day by day. So I love to hear that. Um, a few plays later, Carson Wentz finds Jahan Dotson down the left sideline for a sizable gain. This is from Ethan Cadu. And then uh, Kyle Stagwell says, oh man, Bobby McCain should have picked off Carson Wentz over the middle. He was right there. Uh, so Bobby McCain, remember he dropped that pad, that interception against the uh, Broncos, against Teddy Bridgewater. He, that was like hands like a snake. It was a perfect pass to Bobby McCain from Teddy Bridgewater. And I think he, if he would have caught that, I think we would have had a way better chance of winning that game. So he had four interceptions. Bobby McCain could have had at least six or seven picks last year. He dropped a couple of interceptions for sure. 
Um, Zach Selby says, uh, my computer. He says, uh, Wentz with two goal line touchdowns, one to Terry and one to De'Ami Brown. Not a bad period for the quarterback. De'Ami Brown is somebody to watch in preseason too, man. He's got to step up. He really does. He, this is a big year for him. It really is. It's a big year for him. Um, this one is from Zach Selby. A couple passes have been nearly picked off today. Bobby McCain had one escape his grasp during blitz period, and Nate Jerry couldn't hold on in the end zone. So Nate Jerry making some plays. You gotta, you gotta end up, you gotta catch the ball, but at least he's in the area to make a play. John Kine says we had a fight here. I'll say okay. So brief situation. Shaka Tony didn't like how Curtis Hodges blocked him on one rep after the whistle confronted and then ripped off Hodges' helmet. Went no further. Shaka Tony came out after this play. It wasn't much, but it was a heat. It was heated a couple of seconds. So we had a small skirmish there. Um, and that's basically it. Oh, and then my guy Pedro tweeted, Jeff Zagona, Zanina is a great guy for the job, played in the NFL for 17 years, won a Super Bowl, coached J.J. Watt in 2013, coached DeForest Buckner early in his career. So I'm intrigued, man. I'm intrigued. I don't. Warren Sapp was at practice again today. I think this is a move that, that Ron was really thinking of making. I think the timing is just, you know, it's not great because, of course, uh, what's his name? Sam Mills went to his dad's Hall of Fame induction. So it's just it's just tough to fire him once he came back like that. That's just the that's the bad thing about it, you know. So and it's right before the season starts too in preseason. So that's the thing. But Zagona, I, I've you know I've seen this guy you know yelling at them and, and trying to get these guys ready. And he's he's friends with Warren Sapp, so he's the one that brought Warren Sapp in to come in and, and, and coach these guys up. Warren Sapp said the defensive line they like bowling balls and butcher knives. They have to play together as a unit. There was a lot of selfishness last year. Remember, it's the Bills where they all just ran. The Montez Sweat and Chase were just running past Josh Allen. You know they got to work on stuff like that. They got to play together as a unit. So that's what I see. That's what I want to see from this D line. And it, can Z Z Zanona Zanina get these guys playing together? And then also there's reports. Kevin Sheehan said it. The, somebody got uh, 106.7 said it as well. That there were times where Sam Mills um, would tell them to do other techniques than what uh, Jack Del Rio was telling them. And then you know they were in a film session. And uh, Ryan Kerrigan did what Sam Mills told him to do. And Jack Del Rio was yelling at Ryan Kerrigan about it. You know, was giving him a hard time. But Sam Mills didn't stick up for Ryan Kerrigan and tell him that, uh, you know, that's what I told Ryan Kerrigan to do. Like, you know, players were upset about that. But that's, you know, that's the rumor mill that's hearsay. So I'm just leaving it at that. But all right, you guys, let me know what you guys think. Hell's Commanders. Peace.